on a perfect evening in San Francisco. Candlestick Park is the site of a much-anticipated matchup between the Lions and 49ers on Sunday Night Football. They meet again tonight. Jim Harbaugh leads his San Francisco 49ers against Jim Schwartz and his Detroit Lions in a great matchup on NBC's Sunday Night Football. Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, Michelle DeFoyer, welcome to San Francisco. The place is already rocking. Great matchup tonight. N neither of these teams will sneak up on anybody this year. Last year, the 49ers 13 and 3 went to overtime in the NFC Championship game before succumbing to the Giants. Start of the year this season with a big time road win at Lambeau against Green Bay. Detroit, meanwhile, to the playoffs for the first time in 12 years last year before losing to New Orleans. It's very much a team on the rise. Last week struggled against St. Louis, but Matthew Stafford led them down the stretch and they won the game with 10 seconds to play. So each team comes in with a mark of 1 0. Chris, it's interesting to think that the 49ers were 6 and 10 two years ago, hired Jim Harbaugh. Now a lot of people think this is the best team in the National Football League. Where do you rank them? Well, New England's lost today. I've got them number one in my poll right now, so we'll see. And everybody knows about the defense of the 49ers, a running game with Frank Gore. But what people may not know is Alex Smith and what he's done. He hasn't turned the ball over on an interception since Thanksgiving a year ago. So this team's doing a lot right. Believe me, the 49ers are back. And they face a team in Detroit, Matthew Stafford, an emerging quarterback, almost to elite status, and he's got the best receiver in the league. He sure does. Calvin Johnson, and we've seen it before. It's almost comical, some of the defenses that they put up against this guy. But if the Detroit Lions are going back to the playoffs again, they're going to have to ride the backs of their defensive line, guys like Indomitian Sue, and they can be dominant. Calvin Johnson caught 96 balls last year. They called him Megatron. He'll be in action tonight against that vaunted San Francisco defense led by Patrick Willis. Detroit and the 49ers on Sunday Night Football. Like Sunday Night Football on NBC on Facebook and follow SNF on NBC on Twitter. Catch Michelle Tafoya's live video updates from the sidelines all season long. NBC Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. From the Golden Gate to the reprise of Handshake Gate before tonight's game. Let's go down to the field for more on that. Here's Michelle. Well, Al, leading up to this game, this is what people wanted to talk about, the infamous post-game exchange between head coaches Jim Harbaugh and Jim Schwartz last October at Ford Field after the Niners had come from behind to hand the Lions their first loss of the season. The handshake went awry, and the two nearly came to blows. Now, neither of the coaches wanted to comment on this this week. Schwartz declined to answer any of our questions, but when we met with Harbaugh, 
it was apparent there's a bit of an edge between these teams. Harbaugh called the Lions, quote, a chippy team, a hit you after the fact team, and he said it's been well documented. So he said his players need to keep their heads on a swivel and not retaliate in order to avoid penalties. Now, before the game, the coaches met on the field, they shook hands, they smiled, but Al, either way, one of the most anticipated moments of this night will be when the clock hits zero and these two coaches meet at midfield or don't. Well, Michelle, we will be there to cover it. Chris, all I can say is it's a gripping tale. <laughs> Jim Harbaugh, tremendous success at Stanford. That helped him get this job with the 49ers last year. Jim Schwartz in his fourth season as the head coach at Detroit. Won two games his first year, six games his second year, and ten games in his third year. Each team comes in 1-0. And tonight on a perfect night, temperature in the low 60s, a little breezy as it normally is at Candlestick Park. The Lions won the toss they'll receive. And that's David Akers who tied the NFL record last week in Green Bay with a 63-yard field goal. Stephon Logan is back deep to receive for the Lions. Crowd already roaring. And we are underway in San Francisco with the touchback. And let's take a look at the Lions offense. Matthew Stafford, University of Georgia. Kevin Smith, Central Florida Knights. Calvin Johnson, Georgia Tech. Nate Burleson, Rainer View Elementary. Ty Deshaun, Boise State. Brandon Pettigrew, Oklahoma State. Jeff Bacchus, Michigan. Rob Sims, The Ohio State University. Dominic Rayola, Nebraska. Steven Peterman, LSU Tigers. Goss DeSherilis, Boston College. The Lions, who passed twice as much as they ran last year, see most of their snaps out of the shotgun. They begin this way, and the handoff goes to Kevin Smith, and he will go nowhere. Alden Smith, the outside linebacker, coming off a spectacular rookie when he had 14 sacks, is there to stop him. Alden Smith, really known for his ability to rush the passer, 14 sacks last year in his rookie year. That was the most, but pretty good against the run, as are all these 49ers. I tell you, they can play soft in the secondary, because this front seven can just dominate. Now the wideout, Nate Burleson, lines up next to Stafford and takes the toss from him and doesn't go anywhere as he moves to the outside. And that's Justin Smith in his 12th year out of Missouri, a one-time number one draft choice of the Cincinnati Bengals, who makes the stop. Well, regardless of which team it was that we were talking to, they were all talking about Justin Smith. That's the guy they feel like that this defense revolves around. He enables these linebackers to get up the field, but the cowboy, as they call him, is the force. Third and six as the Lions begin with a couple of runs, and now they will spread it out. And they will take a timeout. So Detroit, a minute and 12 seconds into the game, already has to use a timeout before this roaring throng. Well, Matthew Stafford did it again last week, didn't he? After all the come from behind wins of a season ago, he comes out in opening day, throws three interceptions in the first half, and it looks like the sky is falling. And then with everything on the line, last two drives takes him down the field. And it's just getting to be amazing how many times this team has gotten way behind and found a way to come back and win. We talked about two to one ratio. There it is. Most pass oriented team in the league last year. By contrast, the 49ers were a team that was just about 50 50 run pass. Total balance. There's Patrick Willis. He and Navarro Bowman might make the best pair of inside linebackers in the National Football League. It's third down and six after the timeout. Blitz coming. Pass is incomplete. Calvin Johnson, who's always going to draw a lot of attention, the intended receiver, fourth down. Johnson's just going to come inside, but 
Ahmad Brooks, who looked like he was going to rush the passer there, was actually covering Brandon Pettigrew and just got in the way. Bowman got a little tip of it, but they don't do much tricky back in the secondary. They don't have to. Ben Graham to kick. Kyle Williams is back to receive it, and he'll handle that one out of bounds at the 31. So here comes Alex Smith and the Niners. Let's meet him. Alex Smith, Utah. Frank Gore, the U. Bruce Miller, Central Florida. Michael Crabtree, Texas Tech. Randy Moss, Rand University. Vernon Davis, University of Maryland. Joe Staley, Central Michigan University. Mike Upati, Idaho. Jonathan Goodwin, University of Michigan. Alex Boone, the Ohio State University. Anthony Davis, Rutgers. And yes, Randy Moss back in the National Football League. Last seen at Tennessee two years ago, sat out all of last year, and now they hope to get him in for 20 to 25 plays a game. Got off to a good start last week. Smith on first down from the 33, and that pass is incomplete. And looking for the flag is Vernon Davis. He won't get one. Alex Smith, take a look at this 186 passes without an interception. That is a Team record, not bad for a team that's had people like uh, Y.A. Tittle and Joe Montana and Steve Young and John Brody, but he's only about halfway to the NFL record set by Tom Brady a couple of seasons ago. You know, it's interesting, though, counting his playoffs, which don't count in that streak. He's at 254 right now, which would be pretty close to the record. Kendall Hunter is the running back. We're going to toss it down to Mario Manningham. The Super Bowl hero from the Giants. And Manningham with a big run off a Bruce Miller block. The fullback helping to spring him. And it's a 30-yard gain for Manningham. Well, the key is Cliff Averill gets beat just by what happens. He sinks down inside, which is going to allow Bruce Miller, the fullback, to bypass him and go get the next guy, the safety, down the field. And then it's just all Mario Manningham from there. Michael Crabtree working on the outside against Jacob Lacey for the key block as well. Miller upending the safety, Coleman. From the 38 now, off play action. And good protection to the outside, caught by Crabtree. Out of bounds, he goes at the 22-yard line. If Crabtree can be healthy with Manningham coming and Moss coming and if Ginn can get healthy, the 49ers all of a sudden with a far better passing attack imminent this year. Well, there's Crabtree right there. And because you have to play so honestly against this team and the way they can run the football, now that they have the ability and the trust, really, in Alex Smith to throw the ball, that combination of run and play action is tough to defend. Gore is the running back, Miller is the fullback. Play clock at one. Just does get the snap off. And Smith in the end zone, caught! Touchdown, Vernon Davis! And Davis this time, who missed a dunk at Lambeau, just shoots a layup over the crossbar. What a perfect start for the Niners. The three and out on defense, and down the field they go to score the touchdown. Alex Smith checked out of the play he had. He yelled out, kill, 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 which meant he had a run on. The kill checked it to a pass. He saw the one-on-one -on -one with John Wendling, who's really more of a special teams player, substituting for their great uh, safety, Lewis Dalmas, down there. He saw the one-on-one -on -one matchup and took advantage. Wow, did that look easy. Mm, 235 into the game. Akers to try to make it seven to nothing. Play being reviewed as all scoring plays are upstairs. And now Akers ticking as well as ever in his 14th year in the league. The 63 yarder to tie the record. Last week bangs it through. And so for the 49ers. A spectacular score, 235 into the game. It is San Francisco 7, Detroit nothing. To buy Southwest Airlines, you can find our fares online only at southwest.com. By Verizon, whatever you do, a droid does. By Audi, truth in engineering. And by Frostbrook Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer.
One of the world's great sights, the skyline of San Francisco on this mid-September Sunday early evening. Candlestick Park rocking 7 to nothing 49ers with Akers to kick off and Logan back to receive. And the 49ers were offside on the kickoff as Stefan Logan takes it from the three and brings the ball back out to the 27 yard line. But one of the Niners came across the line before the kickoff. And the referee tonight is Matt Nix. First penalty of the game called by the replacement crew. No sign of progress with the regular officials as far as we know. And Nix will make the call. Now the, the Lions have to decide whether they want the 49ers to kick again or take the play. They can tack it on here too, right? Offsides on the kicking team, number 83. Five yards added to the end of the run. First down. And that's what they do out to the 32-yard line. All right, let's go back to the touchdown for a minute. You're going to see Alex Smith going kill, kill, kill. And he even had motion on the play. Sent the motion the other direction to isolate John Windling, the safety, in a one-on-one -on -one situation and threw the touchdown pass. They would not have been able to do that in week two a season ago in this offense. From the 32-yard line. And straight up the middle. Gain of one. Smith, let's take a look at that 49er vaunted defense. Ray McDonald, the University of Florida. Isako Sopoama, Hawaii. Justin Smith, Missouri. Amar Brooks, UVA. Navarro Bowman, Penn State. Patrick Willis, Ole Miss. Alden Smith, the University of Missouri. Carlos Rogers, Auburn University. Dante Whitner, the Ohio State. Deshaun Golson, Washington. Terrell Brown, DBU, University of Texas. Defense, which played stellarly last year. They give it again to Smith to the 36. The Lions doing a lot of running, and when they run, it's almost always a draw play, and they run so much draw action because they normally line up out of the shotgun, and they hand it to the back on an inside give. Yeah, and if you're a Lions fan and you're surprised because this team does throw it so much, don't be. The feeling from Scott Lenahan was they have to stay patient with the run in order to get in some of these third and regular kind of situations. But they have to be able to win on third down throwing the ball. Third down and six. Johnson comes out of the slot and then makes the catch and avoids a tackle and picks up the first down. So Calvin lined up in the slot to the left to the 44-yard line first down, the first of the game for the Lions. Same play they tried earlier, and all they're going to do is try and get some catch and runs here out of Calvin Johnson. Little pick right in the middle of the field. Almost had a chance to borrow Bowman to make the play. Matthew Stafford a little three quarters, uh, like his former shortstop days. They throw from all different kinds of angles. Clayton High School with Clayton Kershaw, the Dodger pitcher, did Stafford in Texas. Great protection. All kinds of time, but the secondary does its work, so he checks it off underneath and goes to one of their three tight ends, Will Heller, who has it to the 49er 49, and it'll be second down at about four. Well, that was just a two-man pass rush out of the San Francisco 49ers. They dropped their two outside guys off, so there wasn't going to be much of a rush, so Stafford smartly took advantage of it and just moved around until he was able to find somebody open. Lions from the 49 on second down. To the ground to the outside. Here goes Smith, and Smith gets taken down. A flag is thrown. Deshaun Goldson getting him up high, and a flag comes right in. Deshaun Goldson came from about 15 yards deep that time to make the play just about the line of scrimmage. Holding number 76 on the offense. 10-yard penalty remains second down. That would be the 12th-year left tackle, Jeff Backus. 49ers are always going to start with their two safeties deep, but when you've got a guy that went to the Pro Bowl making plays like that, 
willing to come up and stop the run at the line of scrimmage. Not so hard to play in that deep. Second down and 13. Got him. Four man rush. Going deep. Flag is thrown and it's swatted away. I mean, you saw the penalty right there. Chris Culliver and Titus Young. The speedy wide at number 16. And the flag. Great read by Matthew Stafford. He had the one on one on the outside. Exactly what they're hoping for. Pass interference. Number 29 on the defense. Ball will be placed at the spot of foul. First down. If you're going to cover Calvin Johnson with multiple guys, somebody has to be one on one. And this time it's Chris Culliver. But I guess hook the arm a little bit there. We'll grab of the jersey and that was that. 34 yard penalty. And Stafford going deep and that swatted away at the last moment intended for Scheffler. And Carlos Rogers is able to bat it. Rogers the one time Washington Redskin in his eighth year out of Auburn. It's second down and ten. Boy, what a great play by Carlos Rogers right here. This ball looked like it was going to be completed, but he gets his arm between the two hands and the ball of Tony Scheffler and just strips it away. You know, Rogers, one of those guys that, you know, Washington maybe was thought of even as a little bit of a bust, has come here and goes to the Pro Bowl. has been great. Joey Bell is the running back. They fake it to him and give it to Burleson. On his second carry on the end around, this time it is Culliver, who is flagged for that pass interference goal, who comes up to make the tackle. It'll now be third down and eight. And run defense for San Francisco, especially here. Yards allowed per game, TDs allowed. Take a look at that. Last year at home, they did not allow a single rushing touchdown. Good measure because of guys like that, Smith. And the fact they can leave their two inside backers on the field because they're such great cover linebackers. Third down and eight. Pressure. And then the catch is made, but Pettigrew gets taken down immediately by Dante Whitner. And the Lions will have to settle for a field goal attempt from Jason Hansen. Well, when you get in third and eight, you can bring pressure and know that the offense has to throw the ball hot because they can't get it all protected. All you have to do is come up and make the tackle just like that. And one thing you will see out of the 49ers, it is a real rarity when they miss a tackle. And Dante Whitner is not going to miss it. 38-yard attempt. Jason Hansen is 42 years old. He has spent half his life in the National Football League. In his 21st season, Graham puts it down, and Hanson bangs it through. 7.47 left in the opening quarter. 7-3, 49ers. Complete viewing experience, NBCSports.com, SNF Extra. Mike Florio, Michelle Tafoya reporting. Barry Sanders is aboard tonight. Social media analysis. Hey, Barry. Did you ever have a moment of regret? This is my question to you. 30 years old, you retire, you shock everybody after the 98 season. Was there ever a minute of regret? Anyway, you can talk to Barry Sanders at SNF Extra. I had a few regrets when he retired. I would have liked to have seen that guy play about another six or seven years. Me too. Jason Hansen. Lion kickoff. And that's a one hopper fielded by Kendall Hunter. Out of the end zone he comes. And Hunter is still shoving his way out to the 25. And the Lions think that the ball came out. They're signaling they have it. And they come away with the football. And that's Kasim Osgood, the longtime special teams ace. Formerly with San Diego, who comes away with the ball. Al, it sounds strange, but there are times in the NFL where you have to get down. When you're in the middle of a pile like that, defenses will actually try to hold you up so they can strip the football out of there, and that's exactly what happened to Kendall Hunter. So the 49ers 
had that long streak of no turnovers and it would figure on a return. And you don't have to tell 49 fans about what happened in the playoffs last year with the Kyle Williams. Two returns against the Giants. So the turnover here, the ball is at the 25 yard line. The Lions try to cash in. And the handoff goes to Joyt Bell, who had his first ever carry last week, and it went for a touchdown. There were several teams and played his college ball in Detroit at Wayne State. Second and eight. You know, Al, it's, it's almost amazing to me that with just six guys in here, that you can play the run like this. They did the same thing to the Green Bay Packers a week ago. They just played one-on-one -on -one football. They didn't try to overload anything. They protected their back end and their secondary. And guys like Justin Smith, they don't even need a helmet to play defensive tackle on this team. Second down and eight from the 23-yard line. And Stafford slings it to the outside, and that's incomplete. Burleson blanketed by Rodgers. It'll be third down and eight for the Lions. And one of the things that makes it doubly tough to run on these guys, a lot of teams... When it gets to third down, they have to take their two inside linebackers out of the game. Well, the 49ers don't do that because they have two of the best cover linebackers in Patrick Willis and Navarro Bowman. So they're willing to hang in there with those linebackers. So now there's almost no way to run the football. Third and eight. Thirteenth play for the Lions in the balance tonight. Six runs, six passes. And the 49ers come at him, and it's knocked away at the line of scrimmage. Batted down. Ahmad Brooks coming in, and it will be fourth down, and Hanson will come in again. Ahmad Brooks really was just in man coverage right here, but when Kevin Smith stays in the block, he's just going to hang around and wait for him and just happen to be in the throwing lane. Stafford staring it down, and Brooks had it all the way. Jason Hansen, NFL record holder, most games played in the history of the league. This is his 313th, and this is a 41-yard attempt. Bobbled snap, and the kick hits the upright and bangs through. So a little trouble on the hold right there by Graham off the snap from Muehlbach, but Hansen puts it through to make it 7-6 to six, San Francisco. Let's go big on this gorgeous... Sunday night, Candlestick Park, the score seven to six, San Francisco. Hanson with two field goals. I said before, Hanson, 313 games. That's the most by anybody who has never played on the winning side in the postseason game. Most games in history in the league. Morton Anderson about the kicker, of course, at 382. But that's how long it's been since the Lions have won in postseason. Kendall Hunter. A flag comes in, takes the ball on the return up to the 18-yard line. With six and a half to go in the quarter. Matt Nix, a lot of NAIA experience, 30 years as an official, lives in Tennessee, he's an environmental engineer. Holding number 67 on the receiving team. After this is to the goal, the first down. Daniel Kilgore, six of issues on the return unit for the 49ers to start deep in their own territory. The lights went out for good. Producer J.J. Abrams brings a new drama to NBC that proves power is everything. Revolution premiering tomorrow night at 10 Eastern and Pacific, 9 Central and Mountain right here on NBC. And look at Alcatraz, back to Candlestick. The ball is at the nine yard line and on first down here is Frank Gore, their all time leading rusher up to the 23-yard line on his first carry of the night. Almost amazing that the 49ers keep hitting the Lions on this play. It's a tight end trap. When the tackle goes up the field, Delaney Walker kicks him out, and that was the play more than any other in the game in Detroit last year that beat the Detroit Lions. And you would think that after a year of looking at it, they would have had it figured out. A little variation there, but it still worked. He had 141 on the ground at Ford Field last year. And so a handoff goes to the former Miami Hurricane to the 26. Let's take a look at that Detroit defense. 
Cliff Averill, Boilermaker. Corey Williams, Arkansas State. Dom Kinsu, University of Nebraska, Portland, Oregon. Kyle Vandenbosch, Nebraska. Justin Durant, Real HU. Steven Tulloch, North Carolina State University. DeAndre Levy, Milwaukee Vincent High School. Jacob Lacey, Oklahoma State. Eric Coleman, Washington State. John Winling, University of Wyoming. Drayton Florence, Tuskegee University. And that's a secondary that it was of concern at the end of last year and is still of concern right now with three would-be starters inactive tonight. Second down and six. Here's Gore again to the outside. He swings and he gets pushed out of bounds just shy of the first down. But they're minus Chris Houston, they're minus Bill Bentley, and they're minus Luis Delmas, who would normally be starting the backfield. Here's the plays we were talking about in the game last year. You'll watch the... Tight end, Delaney Walker come down, kick out in Dominican Sue. There goes Frank Gore for one of them. And remember, the 49ers weren't doing a lot offensively. Same theory again, got him again. Popped him for another big play and very close game. Came down to a fourth quarter completion late for a touchdown. And that was really the difference. And then they decided to shake hands. 49ers now coming in with their super jumbo package. They've got a defensive lineman in the backfield. And Gore will try to thread his way for a first down, but can't. Will Tukuafu was in the backfield, a nose tackle helping to lead the way. They like to bring extra linemen in, use defensive linemen to provide leverage, but this time the Lions are equal to this task and create a fourth down. Well, Stephen Tullock looked like in there to make that play against his old buddy that he played against all the way back to Little League football. He is going to be come up from right there and squeeze down in there. And there's a relationship between Tulloch and Frank Gore. He said Frank Gore even called him after the Green Bay win and said, "Get ready, you're next." Going all the way back to Miami, and now Andy Lee comes into punt, and they want to reset the play clock. Andy Lee's got that bad thumb too, Al. I was asking him about it before the game and on the Randall Cobb return last week that they all feel like shouldn't have been a touchdown. Fell on the ground and uh, I don't think he'll admit it, but I think he has a broken thumb there and he's the holder and the punter, so we'll keep an eye on it. Well, that's why Scott Tolzien, the third team quarterback, was activated tonight to serve as the holder. If Lee can't do it, and Lee who went to the Pro Bowl last year, sends it down to Logan, who escapes the first man at the 15, and then gets pushed back from the 26-yard line. And a pass of the 49ers, and so the Lions will have it with three and a half to go in the quarter. Before we go to a break, the penalty flag is thrown at the 26-yard line. Number 59, on the receiving team. To hear Whitehead. Stafford and company back to work down by a point in San Francisco. 136 pounds, 96 receptions last year. That's an average of six a game and 17 and a half yards per reception. Highest for a man with 90 or more catches in one season in NFL history. Had over a thousand yards in road games. And if anybody can go over the 2,000 mark in the league, he would have the best chance. All-time record, of course, is held by Jerry Rice at 1,800-plus, the former 49er. All-time great. First down, play action, the Stafford rolls away, and he has trouble when he's out of the pocket. In the pocket, he's normally outstanding, but outside the pocket, if you can get Stafford on the move, he has trouble. Second down. Calvin Johnson is going to get all sorts of coverage. You can see 22, almost 23 yards off with another guy Terrell Brown right there. Watch Brown undercut him, knowing he's got the safety over the top. So Stafford scrambled right, and as I mentioned, that's not what they do best. Yeah, he's only 31% last year outside of the pocket, second down and 10. And this is Joy Bell to the 20 yard line. Lions, the offensive coordinator. There is Scott Linehan, who was the former head coach of the Rams. So they've got Linehan, they've got Gunther Cunningham as their defensive coordinator, former head coach of Kansas City. So Schwartz, you've got 
three guys who have head coaching experience. Third and six. Blitz coming. Stafford throws. It's a wobbly duck that's intercepted by Goldson. And Goldson inside the 30, taken down to the 24-yard line by Jeff Backus. Pressure put on, wobbly throw, and overthrown, and the Niners in good shape. What was that out of Matthew Stafford, a guy that threw for 5,000 yards, and now I thought he did this some a week ago in that game against the Rams, dropped down a little three-quarter, and the ball just sailed on him. That thing missed by 15 yards. There was no receiver anywhere close on the back end of that. Wow. Fourth interception in two games. And if any stadium will create a problem with passing, it's this one. When it comes to sailing your throws from time to time, it's been happening here since 1971. Here's Gord at the 20-yard line. And now you got some action on the near side here. Look, it gets a little chippy. Averill and Delaney Walker. Uh, this was Cliff Averill in the game last year against Anthony Davis. There were a lot of little pushing and shoving and fighting, and Averill here is going to get driven all the way to the sideline. Didn't like it. And really surprised that wasn't called. And you could tell that Vernon Davis wanted to take a shot, but his coach said, I'll kill you if you do, and jumped over him instead. Up close and personal with both 49er tight ends. Gore again. It's to almost the 17 yard line. That'll make it third down and four with a minute and a half to play in the first quarter. Yeah, Will Tukuafu, a defensive lineman. Now in there at fullback, just trying to create a little space. You know, this is old school football here. Bo Schembechler would be proud of what Jim Harbaugh is doing. Is when he took the first coaching job, he said, you're going to have a fullback, right? He said, yes, coach. So you're going to have a tight end, right? He said, yes, coach. You're going to play them both at the same time, right? And he said, yes, coach. <laughs> and he has. He's stuck to that hard-nosed philosophy over the years. And the last thing Bo said to him is, okay, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. You, you have a chance. <laughs> yeah. And now you get a timeout taken here with 53 seconds. And you go back to Harbaugh as the Michigan quarterback in the mid-80s and the legendary Bo Schembechler. And, of course, you know, when you look at the Harbaugh's, you have the father was the head coach at, at Western Kentucky right. for a long time. We'll see John next week against New England. He's the head coach at Baltimore. And Jim, of course, has done a magnificent job at Stanford and here. Yeah, and Jim, you'll remember a few times back in the day with Mike Ditka getting in his face a little bit. So Jim Harbaugh's never had the easy path when it came to uh, his relationships with head coaches over the years. Just another guy who caught the ire of Mike Ditka through the years. Some legendary moments. And how about before the game, as a former quarterback and a very good one, he, he just can't get it out of his system. He's calling plays. He came in the huddle and called the plays. And when talking to some of the 49ers players, they said the hardest day for him is Friday because they rehearse making the calls from the sideline and he can't get out there in the huddle and do some of that stuff. Got the whistles, got the pen, he's got the whole thing. Third down and four. Smith has to go back outside the 40-yard line and then just throw it away. So a bad snap. Goodwin, Jonathan Goodwin is the center, and the 49ers will have to send in the field goal unit. Yeah, Alex Smith, smart play. Uh, it's, it's over at this point. Now you just get it, get outside the pocket, throw it back towards the line of scrimmage, and you're okay. Yeah, well, Sh Schwartz was looking for a flag anyway, contending it was grounding. Nobody in the neighborhood as he just flipped it away. The, at the 35-yard line, Lee will hold for Akers, and that kick is good. Flag is down. 
At the 24 yard line, you got Drayton Florence who came in and made contact. That's significant. It's only fourth and a little less than five. Let's see what it is. This may be a first down. Yeah. Got running into the kicker. It was fourth and four. Play result, uh, foul results in automatic uh, first yes. down. So they'll take the points off the board and give a, a fresh set of downs here with 43 seconds to go in the quarter. Yeah, right off the edge here. I think Drayton Florence is going to be one of the guys there. Not sure he's the one that actually hits the kicker. Well, it may have been the other guy that came in and actually kind of just, it's not exactly a violent collision, but good enough for a first down. Florence on top and Coleman comes in low. Oh, here we go. Look at this. Ball to the 13 and again. Unbalanced line. Unbalanced to the left with a fullback there as well. And now it's Gore who cuts it back over right guard after taking the handoff inside the 10. Yeah, you don't see tackles shifting very often, but watch Anthony Davis. He shifted over to this side, and then all of a sudden they've got the unbalanced line with the tight end on the right side. Delaney Walker basically playing the tackle position, just trying to offset the defense one position so that they can uh, get an additional big guy blocking on that side. Second down and six. They don't have to run a play before the end of the quarter. Even though they do line up here, Randy Moss is at the bottom of the screen. And I think the game clock went to zero. A flag comes in, but there was no call for the end of the quarter. Jacob Lacey with the coverage and getting a flag. Yeah, no doubt. Jacob Lacey hooked Randy Moss going in there, but I agree with you. I thought the clock went to zero it before did. that one. Yep. Pass interference. Number 21 on the defense. Rule, the ball will be fired on the one-yard line. Jacob Lacey, cut by the Colts. He's starting now. First and goal, we come back. 7-6 San Francisco on Sunday night. Football continues after these messages. The FOIA second quarter starts. Davis. Vernon Davis, I think, got poked in the eye by Cliff Averills. He's going to come out. Here's another look at it. Last play of the first quarter. And here's the interference call. It sets up a first and goal at the one. Yeah, not, not much doubt about the call either. And two penalties here on this drive. What should have been a three-point. Don't worry about it. Go get them. Now looking dangerously close to a touchdown. Jumbo package. Gore is the running back. What a heft up front in front of him. And they give it to him, and in he goes for a San Francisco touchdown. Alex Boone helping to lead the way to so the 49ers after the penalty on the field goal attempt. Take three points off the board and wind up with seven with the extra point end up with all the big guys on the right so you're thinking okay they're going that way instead they pull and go the other way and Alex Boone with a nice lead block to get Gore in there but that was one that shouldn't have happened to this Detroit Lions defense a couple of bad penalties there gave him the opportunity third most penalties in the league against the Lions last year it killed him in a lot of circumstances acres to the extra point Three seconds into the second quarter, Gore scoring, and it's 14 to six. Drayton Florence and Eric Coleman. I think it's actually Coleman who is the one underneath David Akers that draws the foul. But sometimes you got to know what's going on. And then Jacob Lacey on the back end. So many guys on this back end that. Wouldn't ordinarily be playing. Eric Coleman was cut by the Falcons. Jacob Lacey cut by the Colts. Drayton Florence cut by the Broncos. And they're all starting tonight. That beautiful shot. Aerial coverage tonight being brought to you by Geico. Looking past the Golden Gate Bridge and the San Francisco with the East Bay and the Bay Bridge in the background and the Cano Stick Park. Southeast 
corner of the city on this Sunday night. Only a chance to work in Cincinnati, Ohio could have drawn you away from that beautiful center. <laughs> it's kind of a lot like Fort Thomas, isn't it? That there shot right go. there. There you go. Jim Schwartz was at Tennessee for a number of years under Jeff Fisher, and that helped vault him to the head coaching job of the Detroit Lions. From two wins to six to ten in his three seasons and last year to the playoffs for the first time since 99 but what happened last year at the end of the year is they gave up 45 in the last game of the season to Green Bay and that's the day that Flynn played and Rodgers just sat it out and then 45 more in the wild card game from New Orleans so defense 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 going to be the story as the wind blows the ball off the tee you really have to give Jim Schwartz some credit boy it Detroit Lions were down for a long time and he brought a little bit of that chippiness we've been talking about tonight. He expects his guys to play with an edge and you put on the tape of any game that they're in and you see a little pushing, a little shoving, a little fighting, a little stuff going on. That's what the Lions are about now. He took over a team that had been 0-16 the prior year. And here's Logan downing it in the end zone. Stafford has made 30 starts in his career. This is his fourth season with most of his second year with the shoulder injury. Most passing yards, only Kurt Warner had more through his first 30 games. Most touchdown passes, well, Marino had 72 in his first 30, then Warner, and then Stafford. So he's keeping some fantastic company. Number one overall pick in 09 out of the University of Georgia. And they give the ball to Joey Bell, a 5'11", 220-pound running back out of Wayne State, second down. It really is amazing to watch Deshaun Goldson coming out of the middle of the field. But you can get away with playing this two-deep safety. I don't know how far that is. That looks like 15 yards to me, something like that. That's a gain of two. And, and, and that tackle right there it is not one of those you hit and he falls forward he hits and goes backwards that's the motto around here in San Francisco drive him back Vic Fangio done a great job as their defensive coordinator check it out the flat and that's a nice move by Bell who makes the catch and turns it into a first down we're seeing Bell and we're also seeing Kevin Smith but two other guys Javid Best who was their best back last year Still hasn't played this year. They hope to have him back in midseason. Concussion syndrome. And Mikel is sure another guy who has had is serving right now a two-game suspension, and they hope to have him back. He missed last year with an injury. They hope to have him back perhaps by next week. Ball at the 32-yard line. Bell again. Up to the 33-yard line. Tackled there by Alden Smith. Michael LaShore is the guy that they're really hoping can make a difference. They were talking about, boy, he'd be perfect for this game because they're trying to stay so patient with the running game to get it to third down, give him a chance on third down, and he's the kind of big back that can break a tackle, fall forward for a couple of yards, get you into some se uh, second and six and third and two, and they're looking forward to getting him out here next week. Second and nine. Now Burleson lines up behind Stafford. And the pass is caught, but paying the price right away is Johnson with Willis, the linebacker, crunching him. Well, we talked about these cover linebackers, and uh, this is not going to be a lot of fun here. Coming across, the plan was to get some catch and runs, get some motion inside. <laughs> Patrick Willis. They're just sitting there waiting on the back door this time, and I don't care how tough Calvin Johnson is. You think about that one the next time across. Well, listen, number one pick out of Mississippi in 07. 49ers have really done some excellent drafting in the last few years. Third and five. Good protection this time, but the pass is too high for Johnson. That's incomplete. Crossing over the middle, Culliver. Covering fourth down. It's another poor throw by Matthew Stafford. That's an easy one. I mean, that was a 
exactly as they designed. A little pick underneath play. They had him open. Good chance for a catch and a first down. He sailed it. Ben Graham to punt. Kyle Williams is back to receive it. From the 17, Williams. Up to the 25 yard line. 12 14 remaining in the opening half with the 49ers leading 14 to 6. Aerial coverage tonight being brought to you by Geico. Look at the Bay Bridge connecting San Francisco and Oakland. Oakland Raiders losing today at Miami. Ryan Tannehill looked good. Yeah. Reggie Bush looked good down there. That was a big comeback after what they did in Houston a week ago. Miami 1-1 one and one and the Raiders are 0-2. 49ers begin this drive from the 25-yard line. And Smith throws. going to be a seven-yard game. Delaney Walker. Alex Smith, it's a very interesting career path. Played at Utah, number one overall pick back in 05 and never been a crowd favorite because during those years the 49ers just weren't very good in any phase of the game. A lot of people thought he would leave here. He had shoulder surgery along the way but uh, last year he said the focus was on football nothing else with Harbaugh coming in and he said finally last year for the first time when he's looking at game fill, he said for the first time I didn't have to press delete. <laughs> Second down and three. And that's caught, and that's a first down, and it's Mario Manningham, the ex-giant, picked up as a free agent in the offseason. They really had to shore up their wide receiving group, and Trent Baalke, their GM, made that happen. Well, one of the things they've been preaching to Alex Smith is just take what the defense gives you. I don't care if it's third and 40. If your reads say go to your check down, throw the check down, we'll punt the football, we have a great punter, we have a great defense, just play the game and Alex Smith said it's just been so much less pressure on me to feel like I don't have to force plays from the 42 the change of pace back Kendall Hunter is the running back and Smith throws to the outside and Randy Moss makes the catch in Detroit territory so Randy Moss a definite Hall of Famer last played at Tennessee two years ago sat out last year Looked like he was retired, but back he came. Makes the grab here. Well, this one looks like the old days of Randy Moss. That was Jacob Lacey playing about three or four miles off of Randy. And if you're going to give him that much cushion, they're just going to take this, and that's going to be easy. I know Randy Moss is he's still a great player, but you can't give him that much. And you got a Dominican Sue coming across the line, but he was induced. Approachment. Well, he was. On the defense, five yard penalty remains first down. One official overruled the other. You had the line judge signaling the uh, false start, and then the other guy says, uh uh. I got to say, uh uh. Right. They got it right. Ball at the 39 yard line, first down. Let's see if Moss gets that same kind of cushion here. Randy Moss at the age of 35. And Smith dancing around, spins away, look out, and then Sue gets him at the 50-yard line and in the grasp and gets the sack. Sammy Hill, first guy to come in, and then Sue finishes it off. Yeah, they were uh, really singing the praises of Sammy Hill. Talking about how this guy has just become a force inside and nobody knows anything about him. And Dominican Sue getting the double team. Allowing Sammy Lee Hill to come in there and make the play. But, you know, that's one thing that Alex Smith will do. He will take some sacks 44 on the year last season. Four already in the Green Bay game, too. But that was one of the things they preached to him. It's like, don't worry about it. They used to teach him it's as bad as an interception. Well, no more. He said, if you got to take a sack, take a sack. That was the old days. Time out. Hunter of the NFL by Frostbrew Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer.
by Taken 2, the man with a particular set of skills, is back. And by Geico, 15 minutes could save you 50% on car insurance. 49ers have played here since 71. And there is their new stadium in Santa Clara. It's about a 45-minute drive south of San Francisco, Silicon Valley. It'll be open in 2014. It is right next door to the 49er practice facility. In fact, there's so much noise that comes from there. It could serve as crowd noise during practice. From the 49-yard line on first down, this is Gore. <laughs> Moving ahead, that was actually a second down and 17 play after the sack, and the timeout, Wendling, makes the tackle. So Gore picks up a big chunk here to make it third down and six. And guess what they're going to do? Here we come, a little tight end wham, and it just keeps working. It, it's really remarkable, but one play has been the Achilles heel for this Lions defense against the 49ers. Third down call at five from the... 39-yard line. Smith, five out of seven for 69 yards and a touchdown. Corner blitz coming. Smith steps up and it's juggled and incomplete. Crabtree couldn't hang on to it. And that was Jacob Lacey coming in from the left corner. Timed it up pretty well. I thought for a minute that Lacey was off sides. He kind of leaned across the line, and it would have been a first down if he had been. Going to come in off the slot. And Crabtree, who probably has some of the best hands in the NFL. Let's watch it right here. See if he leans in off sides. Well, probably not. Close. Lead a punt. Logan is back. He calls for a fair catch and makes it at the 14-yard line. 8.30 left in the opening half. 49ers by 8. Count Fantasy Football. Sign up tonight for the official fantasy game of the NFL at NFL.com slash fantasy. Downtown San Francisco, now to Candlestick Park. First and 10, ball 14-yard line. As the Lions begin this drive with a Smith run. And Kevin out to the 20-yard line. I'll tell you, the one thing you notice right away with the 49ers defense is their tackle. I haven't seen them miss a tackle yet today, and usually these are violent plays, especially after some of these passes. You heard of Yak, the yards after the catch. Well, this is back because that's where you end up after these guys hit you, especially somebody like Patrick Willis. Yak is what we do. <laughs> Too much, probably. Second and four. From the 20. Smith again. And he fights his way to the 25. You know, we talked about that SNF extra, all the stuff he can do. And Barry Sanders is on there tonight as a guest. Just tweeted back to me after that question that I asked him. He said, I must say I'm very happy with my life now. No regrets. I loved the game. I respected it. I just knew in my heart I was done. I'm just so glad to hear you use the term tweeted back. <laughs> Boy, are we contemporary or what? Thousand yard rushing season, Sanders with 10 of them. Everybody else combined, seven. He was just a joy to watch. Fake to Burleson, pump fake, and then he swings it out to Burleson, who's open for some good yardage here. And he gets taken down, and should have the first down, Willis Makes the tackle, but not until he crosses the 35-yard line. Well, Stafford wanted to go to Calvin Johnson, but watch all the attention he's going to get out here on the outside. So they fake the reverse to Burleson, and because of the fact that Terrell Brown's got his back turned, they swing it out to him now as the flare control guy and almost and do pick up the first down. Smith. Smith had been their key back a couple of years ago, down by contact. And then last year they had drafted the Shore. They had Javis Best, and they didn't offer Smith a contract, and he was out of football. But he stayed in shape. And then because of all of the injuries the Lions had, they called him up, and uh, he was able to finish the season with him. And of course, he was such a workhorse in college, and a lot of people thought that 
took a lot out of him at Central Florida one year and he carried the ball about nine million times. Second and eight. Smith again. And he also came back from injuries as well. Patrick Willis making the tackle. Third down and six, and Smith stays in on third down. Five and a half left in the half. Pressure coming, pass caught Johnson inside the San Francisco 40 to the 36 yard line. Stafford hanging in under pressure and hitting Johnson. Ahmad Brooks is going to try and drop back underneath this thing and get Calvin Johnson. I like this move though, bringing Calvin Johnson down inside. So now the double coverage isn't quite as effective because you can throw some back shoulders and do some things to take advantage of his big body. When he's out wide, much easier to double team the wide receiver when he's flanked wide like he is now. Brooks couldn't swan it away. Third down conversion. And first down now, they run Smith again through the middle, and then Justin Smith pushes him back along with Bowman. Justin Smith, the guy they call Cowboy around here, and he has been an absolute monster. And the reason that he's so effective is when you put on the tape, there's almost never a play in which he's not double teamed. And when he draws all the double teams, that means Alvin Smith can have 14 sacks and Patrick Willis becomes all pro and so does Navarro Bowman. But somebody has to eat up all those blocks and that dirty work goes to Justin Smith. Almost never comes out playing at the highest level in his 12th year. And Stafford going deep and incomplete. Titus Young was down there. And it'll be third down. I think there's a flag down on the outside, too. Yep, on the 23-yard line. I don't know what happened to Titus Young here. He just quit on the play. Holding number 22 on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Automatic first down. And that's Carlos Rogers. An automatic first down for the Lions. It's just a bizarre play, though, by Titus Young. They had an opening down the middle. Right there. Let's see if we can pick this up. Yeah, and the ball, really, Titus Young should have had a chance for that ball. He just, I guess he never saw it. And Smith takes it to the 22 yard line with 340 to go in the half. Bowman making the tackle on the, the Lions coaches talking to Young after that play. And run. run. Just don't give up on a play. Speaking of not giving up, I have to give Scott Linehan some credit. I, I mean, this looked like they were never going to gain an inch running the football, and he has just hung with it here, and it's kind of working here. This is, this is not easy to do against the 49ers, and at least they're not in negative play situations here. 15 rushes for 45 yards, second and four. Line does its job, and then it's juggling, and it's incomplete. Ballman hanging right with Calvin Johnson as he crosses over the middle, third down and four. Yeah, they're really just waiting on these crossing routes now by Calvin Johnson. You'll see Navarro Bowman here. He's just going to sit there and wait, and you've got to get some kind of a pick on him. You've got to get somebody else rubbing against him, and you might be able to pop out of there with a big play, maybe even a touchdown. Stafford now under 50%. It's 7 out of 15. Calvin Johnson back inside right here. They'll work out of the slot. They go 3 by 2 here. Three to the left, two to the right, and everybody into the pattern. Pressure put on, and the pass is incomplete. Intended for Johnson. That was a mod Brooks who got a shot in on Stafford. And comes the field goal group. This time they bring Justin Smith right over the center. 
and just try and cram Dominic Raiola back in, but a really good play. Well, actually, Carlos Rogers got a little piece of jersey on that one and got away with it. Hanson comes in for a 40-yard field goal attempt. Graham to hold. Trying to kick his third of the game on this breezy night. From 40 yards away, it hits the upright, and that one is no good. So he had one doink that went through and another doink that doesn't. 2.53 left in the half. It's 14 to 6, 49ers. Comes by Justin Timberlake, Viola Davis will be there. Parks and Recreations, Amy Fuller among the guests with Jay Leno on the Tonight Show all this week right here on NBC. So the Lions went 65 yards, 11 plays, five and a half minutes, got no points. And Smith hanging in there, going deep and incomplete off the hands of Vernon Davis, the tight end going deep downfield. Covered by the longtime San Diego and Buffalo corner, Drayton Florence. Usually a tight end against a corner is a mismatch, but not when you're talking about Vernon Davis. They say he is the fastest player on their team. Can you imagine a tight end, the fastest player, and Drayton Florence never turns around. Davis had a good shot at that one and just couldn't hang on. Fastest player on the team at 6'3", 250. Amazing. From the 30. Gore, big hole. And a 16-yard gain for Frank Gore, all-time leading 49er rusher. Out of Miami, their third-round pick back in 05. Alex Smith's calling a great game. That was a check. They're going to trap this three technique over here on the other side. That was an audible all the way. Hey, Alex Smith and his growth in this offense is significant. I mean, this is a different guy than what we saw a season ago. Now, Kendall Hunter is the running back. And it's checked down to Hunter, and it's incomplete as he can't handle it at midfield. Stephen Tulloch covering on the play. It'll be second down and 10 with 2.05 left in the first half. Pretty good battle going on on the outside. Joe Staley right here against Kyle Vandenbosch. And so far, Vandenbosch, nothing to show for it. Staley struggled a little bit last week in Green Bay. He's probably their best offensive lineman. Went to the Pro Bowl, but didn't have a great day. But bouncing back here so far in this one. Second and 10, and they want to draw. And Hunter cannot get out of the grasp of DeAndre Levy. And that will take us to the two-minute warning with 1.59 to go in the opening half in San Francisco where the 49ers lead the Lions 14-6 on Sunday Night Football. The Eli's big day against Tampa Bay. Michael Vick and the Eagles win again, and the Cardinals shot the Patriots. Need Foxborough to go to 2-0, and so we have a halftime show coming up. Third and ten now. Smith in the shotgun from his own 46-yard line. Good protection. And he fires it into the arms of Davis. First down at the 42-yard line. Vernon Davis, number one pick in 06. Niners have one timeout left. Big time throw by Alex Smith down low. Only his guy could get it on third down. Doesn't take a chance. No interception. Nice throw. Smith. And that's dropped and turning around was Gore to look upfield before he looked it into his hands. Second and ten. It was interesting. Frank Gore last year had only 17 catches in this offense. It's the first time since his rookie season that he had fewer than 40. So he hasn't really been involved as much in the passing game as he once was. This guy used to play a little peewee football against high school and good buddy trains with Stephen Tulloch in the offseason and I'm sure they're exchanging pleasantries out there. Gore called him after the game in Lingo last week. He said, how about what we just did? 
The whole country was saying that. Yeah. Second and ten. And Smith hangs in there, and the pass is incomplete. And that's Kyle Williams looking around for a flag and doesn't get one. Tullick with the coverage, third and ten. Oh, that was Stephen Tullick coming up and got his arm in there, and I thought it was a good play. Let's see. Well, you're allowed to reach your arm around and knock that ball out. Yeah, yeah pretty good. Yeah, a little bit, a little bump. <laughs> Official going down. Well, the umpire wouldn't have seen it anyway. That's right. The umpire in the last two minutes moves to that old position on the defensive side of the ball instead of going into the backfield with a ref. Now Smith's going to run it. And he's going to also toss it with a shovel. And Gore is stopped after a minimal gain. Fourth down. Detroit has two timeouts left. And they will use one of them right here to save some time. Before the lead punt, so they'll have one. Stefan Logan is back to receive. Early evening in San Francisco. Don't forget about Andy Lee's thumb. Now we've I saw him holding before the game. He did fine with it, but he was definitely shaking it off after a few of the holds he was putting down. Olsman holding on the place kicks on those two extra points tonight. No problem here. Nose down punt. And Logan will fair catch it at the 10 yard line. So the Lions will go to work here with 65 seconds. One thing you know if you're going to beat the Detroit Lions, you have to shut down Calvin Johnson. <laughs> the way to do it is just put everybody on him. And Alden Smith's going to take a shot and two guys playing in behind him. That's one way. Then you get the corner rolled up and he's playing man to man underneath with the safety over the top. Well, Brown. Doesn't care if he goes deep because he's got help back there. Tough being a superstar. Three carries. He's been limited to 36 yards, 24 of them on one catch. And they're going to keep it on the ground and give it to Smith from the 10-yard line. So the Lions will be apparently content to just go into the locker room down by eight. Would have been by five. Or fewer had uh, the winds of candlestick. Not move Jason Hansen's last field goal attempt around. Yeah, that was a big miss. I talked to Jason Smith and he knew, Jason Hansen knew what an effort it was going to take to kick it well in this place because it is crazy down there. I mean, it was, these balls went nuts and now the Lions are, I think this is the right move here. Candlestick, here. what uh, Howard Cosell once called a monument to political chicanery. <laughs> After I whispered it in his ear. Uh, you always were his writer. <laughs> <laughs> and that'll take us to halftime. As the San Francisco 49ers lead the Detroit Lions 14 to 6. So at a halftime show with Bob Dan, Tony, and Rodney coming your way after these messages from your local NBC station. This telecast is copyrighted by the NFL for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this telecast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the NFL's consent is prohibited. At the heart of every NFL game, there's a moment that changes every day. NFL Turning Point, presented by Chevrolet. Wednesday on the NBC Sports Network. to the end zone, caught, touchdown, Vernon Davis. What a perfect start for the Niners. And one thing you will see out of the 49ers, it is a real rarity when they miss a tackle. Stafford throws, it's a wobbly duck, it's intercepted by Goldson. What was that out of Matthew Stafford? Then he goes for a San Francisco touchdown. Start of the third quarter, 49ers on top of the Lions, 14-6. And you can follow your favorite team all season long. Go to iTunes.com slash NFL. Al Michaels, Chris Collins, Word, Michelle DeFoya, Candlestick Park. 
as you look at the Golden Gate Bridge and now down into the home of the 49ers since 1971 but not for much longer as they'll move down the peninsula 2014 the numbers through the first 30 minutes of competition 49ers two to one on the ground passing yardage even each team with one turnover you have to remember the Detroit Lions and Matthew Stafford passed for over 5,000 yards a season ago and the city 67 yards and a half that means they're playing Jim Harbaugh San Francisco 49er kind of football and somehow the Lions have to get it into Lion football you know they I know they're being patient they want to get some catch and runs but at some point maybe you take a deep shot against these safeties and just give Calvin Johnson a chance to go up and get one. Well, the 49ers will get the ball first as Kendall Hunter is back to receive the kickoff from Hanson. Each team coming off a week one win and the 49ers will start from the 20. One of the things that you want to do against an aggressive pass rushing team are some of the whams and the traps. Lanny Walker here is going to come down in on Indomitian Sue. There's a big run. Same theory on this one. Back down inside. Just a different angle, a different way of doing it. And then just the guard pulling across and trapping. And yet another big run. That has been the way that the 49ers in each of the last two meetings now have been able to move the football against the Lions. Oh, oh. 49ers with 12 rushes and 20 and 15 passes in their 27 plays. Hunter starts as the running back here. A little toss to him and then a toss back to Smith. Avoids the sack at first. But then he's going to go down in the arms with a flag thrown. Kyle Vandenbosch got him and takes him down behind the line of scrimmage. Personal foul, face mask, number 93 on the defense. And there's Vanden Bosch signaled for it first down for the 49ers. Uh, it just kills you because you've got a big play opportunity for your deal. <laughs> He's helping the ref. Well, they are replacement refs. He's going to help them right in the middle of the play there. But, you know, instead of it being a sack and move back and now momentum and the start and second half and here they get a first down the easy way. Yeah, 31 personal foul calls against the team. So that's two a game on average against the Lions last year. From the 32, give it to Gore. And Frank up to the 34-yard line. There we go. Yep. Anthony Davis, he was uh, in the middle of all of it last year. And that time, well, they say to the play to the echo of the whistle. He drove his guy about five or six yards down the field and just buried him. Well, you see him right there. Dave Averill ends up on his back and it was those two, even on Twitter afterwards, you'd be proud to know, continued the battle. I never heard of Echo of the whistle. It was her two to whistle, second and eight. Flip out to, here, to Manningham and he will pick up. A first down up to the 47 yard line. That was close. There was one of the DBs is going to end up circling down into this play and had a chance at the interception and just never really saw the ball. Looked like DeAndre Levy was looking more at the receiver than he was back at the ball. Might have had one. Shut up. 200 without a pick. And it's Gore. And Gore just pulls his way behind the Vernon Davis block for a first down to the Detroit 42 yard line. One of the things that you'll see is the way that they move various people in this offense. Start everybody right. And then Frank Gore stayed patient enough to stay in behind his fullback. 
Frank, Frank Gore's one of those guys, you talk to defensive players and they just hate him. He's only about 5'9 or so, and they say it's almost impossible to get underneath his shoulder pads to make a tackle. And Vernon Davis was able to screen out Brandon Bosch on the play as well. Great blocking up front from the 42. Off play action, the pass to Manningham, and he'll pick up six or seven yards. Kind of the same play, fake it in there a little bit and come back the other way. And now we're starting to see a little of that chippiness we saw from the first game. Just going to fake it out to Kendall Hunter and come out the other way. And it's one of the things that I think the 49ers are doing a much better job of. Alex Smith is an athletic guy. He ran all the time in college. It was one of his strongest assets. And yet here they put him on like a three-second shot clock in practice and got him into some habits of not using his mobility. The toss and this goes to Hunter and Hunter for a first down to the Detroit 25 yard line tackled by the safety Wendling one of the things that the 49ers do a great job of is they use motion to outflank their opponents that time Delaney Walker goes in motion and they end up getting the edge on the outside Joe Staley with a good kick out block but very rarely will you see at any time, the 49ers just come up and get set in a formation and run the play. They're going to get set. They're going to shift. They're going to motion. They're going to give you a lot of looks. From the 24-yard line. Smith gets chased. Gets away just for a second and then goes down. And that's Sue who creates that whole play. Corey Williams comes in for the cleanup. Moved him, Don Kinsu, to the outside there into that sort of bunch formation right there. All those extra linemen, and he just splits between them, saw it all the way. And really, he's not going to get credit for the sack, but it was his. They were not too happy with him, Don Kinsu, last year. They felt like Gunther Cunningham said, I gave him about 25% of his ability, what he gave us last year, and expected more this year. On second and 20, here's Davis. Breaking tackles and Vernon Davis, one of the clear, premier tight ends in the National Football League, finally taken down by Stephen Tullock. And Dominic and Sue, since he switched back to the stance that they want, this sprinter stance can make moves like that to get to the quarterback, just missed another sack that Vernon Davis arguably one of the best athletes if not the best athlete in the nfl tough guy to get on the ground so from second down and 20 to third down and seven <laughs> opening drive of the second half 49ers up by eight is caught inside the 19 but shy of the first down Crabtree tackled by Coleman and Akers comes out to try to extend it to an 11 point lead well, but that was just a matter of what they were talking about with Alex Smith do what they give you and that time they came with a slot blitz off the edge he threw right into the blitz picked up a few yards big deal we'll kick a field goal no problem Andy Lee will hold it. A 36 yard attempt of the longtime Philadelphia Eagle and now San Francisco 49er is good. And it's 17 to 6, 49ers. Wendy's Asiago Ranch Chicken Club by Bud Light, the official beer of NFL fans. Here we go. By Toyota Care, caring for you and your car, and by Internet Explorer, welcome to a more beautiful web. One of the premier football programs in the country, the other sound of Concord, Melville St. Mary Stockton on Friday night, 21 to 13. John Madden's been watching a lot of those games through the years. Nothing better than high school football. Take a Friday night, go enjoy yourself, read on the guys out there. Logan back to receive the kick. Detroit getting the ball for the first time in the second half. And blows off the tee. 
you know, this 49ers defense has just gotten it done tonight. They have Matthew Stafford, remember the stat, 350 yards per game the last four games, five counting the playoffs. Right. Tonight, 67 yards passing. And that's that, that 49er D that was so brilliant last year. Did his job well enough, obviously, in Green Bay last week. And tonight has limited Detroit to just a pair of three-pointers. Logan from a yard in. And around the corner he goes and a good run back before he is shoved out of bounds by Culliver. Look at a beautiful sunset over the Pacific. Of course, this was the big storyline in this game during the offseason after last year. And this took place before the game. Reading between Schwartz and Harbaugh after last year's handshake was the one that launched six million hours of frame-by-frame -frame cable coverage. But all is good. We can all get along now. 17-6 San Francisco. From the 39-yard line, Detroit begins this drive after Logan's fine run back. And Smith. Gain of three, second and seven. Here's Michelle. Well, Al, I asked Jim Schwartz at halftime how they can get the, the ball down to Calvin Johnson and downfield, get him open. He said, we had him open a couple of times. We just missed him. We've got to get him a better ball and put him in position to get yards after the catch. He also acknowledged the missed field goals, the penalties, and the interception hurt them in that first half. He said, we just got to put those mistakes behind us and move on. All right, thank you, Michelle. And Johnson's been limited to the three catches, 36 yards. The longest one was 24, but on balance, the Niners have done an outstanding job on all facets of defense, and they get this one into Johnson again, but he's still short of the first down. Third and a couple, Navarro Bowman making the tackle. Well, Jeff Backus, a guy that's been around for a long time, is blocking one of the great young stars in the game, Alden Smith, on the outside, and he's not getting any help. Of course, they're getting the ball out of there pretty quickly, and now he could use a little drive block, maybe third and a long one here. Big play for the Lions. 12 years, finally got to play in a postseason game for the first time last year. Third and a long one. And they flip it out. That's a first down as Kevin Smith, who scored the game-winning touchdown on a pass from Stafford with 10 seconds left against St. Louis last week, moves the chains. Just remarkable how much attention Calvin Johnson gets. He's going to come in motion, and look at all this down in here. And nobody takes the running back coming out of the backfield. Actually, it was the tight end releasing up the field, got a little pick against Navarro Bowman that created the space. third quarter. Smith gets taken down in the backfield by Justin Smith. Yeah, pretty tough to cut off the old cowboy as they call him. Right here is just going to beat Jeff Backus across his face here. And that's what happens. You don't double team that guy and he makes plays in your backfield. Pretty amazing. He was a defensive end kind of a player and by his own admission talked to him before the game. Said, you know, I was always just a step slow to play out there. Now they bring him inside into that defensive tackle position. Now he's a step too fast. 172 consecutive regular season starts for him. And here is Smith. And before he gets knocked down by Deshaun Golchin, it's a big gain and it's going to set up a third down and one. Well, you've got to get these combination blocks going right here. And can you get up on the linebacker? That's always the question. Dominic Riola here gets up inside against Navarro Bowman and creates that space for Kevin Smith to get down the field. So they run it on second and ten, get nine. Third and one. Joy Bell is the running back. And here is Bell, and Bell is able to twist his way 
past the line of scrimmage and into first down territory to the 27-yard line. Well, that time the Lions were going to take a shot at a wham themselves and really don't get it, but Joy Bell just makes a nice little spin move at the point of attack and somehow manages to pick up that first down. So Lenahan staying patient. As long as those two safeties stay in the middle of the field, he's going to take his shots with the running game and the short passes. Four-man rush gets it away quickly. Johnson, but a very short game. He gets taken down by Terrell Brown. safety there's the corner that's the look he's gotten all night long but watch how Calvin Johnson lunges with his ball at the end that doesn't look like much but instead of like second and seven you end up with second and about five and now you're on pace to get another first down well, the six five Johnson springing forward for those extra couple and Alvin Smith is right there to make sure Joey Bell goes no farther to the 22-yard line. Yeah, I thought that was a bad run that time by Joy Bell. Really, Jeff Backus had a pretty good block going on the outside on Alden Smith. They had a good hole up inside of him, and there just was nothing outside. Watch Backus. He's got him pinned to the outside. They've got a good block going on the inside backer. That's what young backs do sometimes. They don't stay on the pad. Third and five. And that is caught, but Calvin Johnson is stopped at the line of scrimmage, the 22-yard line. Another bad throw by Matthew Stafford in a big moment. I mean, that, that's a simple little screen pass. They've got a, some blockers out in front of him, and he threw it in the dirt. Got to give your guy a chance for a catch and run here. So this will be a 40-yard attempt. Again, in the swirling wind at Candlestick Park. Hanson, two out of three. He's hit two uprights. One was good. The other came back at him. From 40. It knuckleballs its way through. So he's three out of four. It's a one-possession game. 17 to 9, San Francisco. Saturday grade rivalry in prime time. Michigan number 18 against the Fighting Irish, who last night knocked off Michigan State. Notre Dame Saturday live 7:30 p.m. Eastern, only on NBC. Bay Bridge, and the cantilever, the former cantilever portion from Treasure Island and Yerba Island over to the East Bay, and now a candlestick where once again. For the 4,000th time in the history of this stadium, the wind blows the football off the tee. Such a different team, isn't it? You're so used to seeing all the Bill Walsh and Joe Montana and Steve Young offensive juggernaut kind of teams, and this team looks more like the Baltimore Ravens or Pittsburgh Steelers. They're going to win with this defense, and you can see why. Well, they hope enough offense is the kickoff by Hanson is taken four yards in. Kendall Hunter is going to come away with it. And get bumped down at the 15-yard line. Three minutes, 33 seconds left in the third. San Francisco by eight. Oh, last year, only 77 rushing yards a game. Just 10 turnovers in the 16 games, 38 takeaways. Most in the league, 44 net yards per punt. 44 field goals made for Jim Harbaugh's team. So a lot of it was defense. They were 13 and three. They had that phenomenal win over the Saints in the playoffs. And then the agonizing, excruciating overtime loss to the Giants in the championship game. And this is Hunter for a game of nine. Unless we forget, Chris, they also the 49ers did, flirted with Peyton Manning in the offseason. Yeah, that would have been interesting, wouldn't it? But uh, you kind of got the feeling that you know, Jim Harbaugh was going to keep his system, and Peyton Manning obviously wanted to do his thing and had a better opportunity to put his style of offense in in Denver. 
but if you put Peyton Manning with this defense, it'd been a little frightening. Well, the 49ers called it. We were evaluating him. Second of all, that created a little bit of eye rolling. From the 24. And that's Hunter turning the corner, picking up the first down behind the fullback block of Bruce Miller. First and ten. And you can see how many times they move Vernon Davis back and forth and back and forth. And really the entire point of it is they're trying to outflank the defense. So they're trying to get him to shift a little bit inside when he goes back inside and then hope that athletically he can just get outside of the defense here. Working against Tullock gets on that block. Creates just enough space to pick up the first down. The Lions' answer to that was going to be, we're not shifting. You know, they do all this stuff pre-snap. We're just going to let them do their thing. We're going to sit in our defense and not worry about it. Two minutes left in the third. Here's Gore. Good vision, looking ahead, trying to find that open spot at the right moment. They'll be making the tackle. Second and four. Well, Coach Gore working with Kendall Hunter, the backup running back, and said the relationship has been great. Gore's taught him everything he knows about running back. But Kendall Hunter is one of those kids that comes in bubbling with enthusiasm every single day and just can't, just loves the game of football. And he thought he sort of re-energized Frank Gore as well. Gore coming back in. Hunter, Hunter back on the bench. He can get lost in there at 5'7", 199. Quick drop and a quick pass to Michael Crabtree to the 46-yard line and a 49er first down. And here's what happens to you. You get run, 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 and then finally decide to throw it, and you got one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside against a guy that was released by the Indianapolis Colts earlier. Good solid throw in there by Alex Smith, and those are the kind of opportunities you get. When you can run the football, eventually you get that single coverage that Calvin Johnson hasn't seen all night. That's Moss in motion to the inside. And the pass is caught. Hunter, he's out of bounds at the 42-yard line, and that's a gain of 12 on a first down. Pretty interesting move. I don't know if it was intentional or not on the part of Kendall Hunter. He looked like he was almost going to do a chop block down inside. Kind of goes down. His hand goes down. And then he comes out of it and fools Stephen Tullick, the middle linebacker, who thought he was blocking on the play. From the line, 42. Go, 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 go. To Gore. And Gore with a first down. Terrific drive by the 49ers. Gore taking the ball to the 30, and that's the end of the third quarter. San Francisco 17, Detroit 9. Sunday Night Football back after these messages. You by Geico. Now Michael's Chris Collins working the Shelter Voyage, San Francisco, as you look at the waterfront on this Sunday night. And the candlestick puck to start the fourth quarter. The 49ers up by eight. This drive started at their own 15, three runs, three passes. They're now at the Lion 31-yard line. And Smith will go to the fullback who will juggle the ball out of bounds. Bruce Miller. And it'll be second down and 10, the former defensive end, though. Go back to this move by Frank Gore in the open field working against Coleman. That's a knee buckler right there. And then on the other side, Stephen Tullick is going to get rolled up on by Joe Staley, and he limped out of the game. Ashley Palmer, third year linebacker out of Mississippi. Buffalo takes his spot. Second and 10. Smith stepping up in the pocket. And that's juggled. So two drops here, one by Miller, one by Walker. And it will be third down and 10. You know, I keep waiting for one of those wham passes. You know, they've hit them with about four or five of those fake the wham blocks and and try and get a pass out here, but 
Well, they're in field goal range, but in this stadium, it's a tough kick. You just don't know what the wind's going to do, so I think you have to stay aggressive here offensively and at least try to pick up six, seven yards. Well, prevailing wind here, it's wind shear <laughs> candlestick park. <laughs> That's a fact. It always has been. Third and ten. Fires and that's incomplete. That was Manningham in amongst the bunch of blue and white shirts. Fourth down. Looked like he had a shot at this one too. Let's see if he did. That would have been three straight balls that were. Yeah. I mean, that's for Alex Smith. He got it done and his guys just couldn't catch it. Well, it'll be a 48 yard attempt for David Akers. Upside, of course, as you make it, the downside is Detroit will get the ball at the 38 yard line. Lee will put it down, and Akers is ageless. 49ers back up on top by 11. to nine on the Sunday night week two of the National Football League season some wild stuff all day long one thing about Detroit they proved it last year they're not out of it four times last year big 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 time comebacks including one against Oakland right across the bay and Detroit will begin its next drive from the 20 yard line with 14 42 left in regulation at Candlestick Park on Sunday Night Football. For today, innovation for tomorrow, innovation that excites by Corona Extra, inviting you to find your beach. And by SAP, SAP helps companies run like never before. 60 degree night in San Francisco. Lions last year, three comebacks after trailing by 17 or more four by 13 or more three of those four comebacks came on the road tonight they'll try to come back from 11 down here and they start this drive with a Kevin Smith three yard run up to the 23 yard line the Lions receiving tonight and the 49ers have bottled them up Johnson's been thrown to 10 times caught six 46 yards Burleson three for 11 yards. Everybody else with one. They are averaging four and a half yards per pass play. These two deep safeties in the middle of the field are preventing anything deep being thrown down the field. And so far, the underneath stuff hasn't looked so good either. Second and six. There he is. And Stafford, and finally Johnson gets free. And they will spot the ball at midfield, tackled by Goldson. Carlos Rogers got fooled on that one. One-on-one -on -one right here with this matchup. Watch this move. Now they still have safety help over the top. A little out juke, and Carlos Rogers went that way, and Calvin Johnson went the other way. That's what they needed to get something going. 26-yard gain, so Stafford trying to work his magic again in the fourth quarter, as he did last week against the Rams. Smith. Three-yard gain to the 47-yard line. Second and seven. Last week, Stafford, after he threw those three picks against the Rams in the first half, fourth quarter, 10 out of 15, and that touchdown pass came with 10 seconds left in the game for Smith. Something about the fourth quarter in this football team Sort of like the NBA, they talk. You know? Right. Just tune in the fourth quarter because that's when the show starts. Second and seven. Stafford out of the gun. Protected well. That's a first down that is caught by Tony Scheffler, the tight end, and they will spot the ball at the 35-yard line. After you hit a big play down the field, now you end up with two guys and you use him as the decoy. Let Calvin Johnson go deep and you know everybody's going with him and let Scheffler come back underneath. Five 
began at the 20 after the kickoff to the 35 quickly. Two rushes, two passes. And Stafford's going to run it for a first down to the 23-yard line. So he spread them all out. The middle was open. He exploits it. First down. That's a great job right there. This cover two man means that everybody's chasing the wideouts. Now you want to move your defensive tackles outside the guard. No problem with that. I'm just going to take off and run with it. But quarterbacks running with the ball in that coverage has been very effective. Pretty close to the end, yeah. yeah, by Whitmer. No call. First down at the 23-yard line. To the ground again. Smith stopped at the 20-yard line. A little more than 11 minutes to play in regulation. Now, now's when you need your big play guy. It's, you know, we've seen it last year. You remember the game down in Dallas where the end of the game and everything on the line and Matthew Stafford basically threw into triple coverage down there and Calvin Johnson went up and just got it from everybody. He's six foot six, can jump out of the gym, mostly like a 44 inch vertical jump. Sometimes you take your best guy and you just give him a chance. Stafford, a deep drop, running out of time, and thought he stayed up, and then finally back at the 37. Alden Smith, the first guy there, felt his knee wasn't down. The play kept on going, and then Brooks comes in to finish the playoff. Yeah, I think his knee was actually down, or it looked like to me, right yeah, there, definitely. Alden Smith, so that ball should have been on the 30-yard line. In a strange way here. Yep. That's, that's a big six yards in this situation. You're going to have to take a look at that one. There you go. Well, here comes the challenge flag, and the only way you can do it is by a Detroit challenge. And he wants to save those six yards. He's saying, hey, wait a second. He was down. There was no whistle. So it was a minus 15 on the sack. Detroit is challenging the play, saying the quarterback was down by contact. So Schwartz is trying to say it's more like an eight or a nine yard sack than 15, our first challenge of the night. A sack at the 30 yard line, it's going to make it third and 17 instead of third and 23. It's pretty clear when you take a look at the replay. Now the tough thing from the Lions standpoint is the 49ers actually blew a coverage and should have been a first down to Brandon Pettigrew on the play. Patrick Willis right here doesn't see the snap count. And we're going to get Pettigrew wide open in the middle field. Should have been an easy first down, but too locked in that time on Calvin Johnson cost Matthew Stafford a sack. Matt Nix. Cool. The quarterback was down on the 30-yard line. The ball will be spotted at the 30. Please reset the game clock to 10 minutes, 37 seconds. The clock will wind on the ready. Detroit is not charged with a timeout. Among other things, too, you're looking at the possible field goal here, so that could be a very big six yards. It's third and 17, the ball at the 30-yard line. I think they're going to try and do something underneath to just get this thing a little bit closer. They've been using Calvin Johnson rubbing underneath and I think they'll come right back with it try and get him a catch and run here and the whistle before the snap false start number 13 on the offense five yard penalty remains third down Nate Burleson big five yards Give up the what you just got back. Watch these linebackers on the snap of the ball. They're going to give you that seven, eight, nine yard pass underneath, but they're not picking up this first down. So now third and 22, at least trying to get back into some semblance of field goal range. So in this ballpark, who knows what field goal range? Third and 22. Three down linemen. Eight men back to cover. 
Here's Smith. He starts to stumble and he gets the ball to the 30. So you're looking at right now about a 47, 48 yard field goal, trying to make it a one possession game in the swirling winds of Candlestick. Yeah, you've already hit a couple of goal posts, a couple of uprights. So you know it's in your head and the ball probably blew left on the first one and blew right on the second one. So you just aim down the middle and hope. Screwballs, knuckleballs, you name it. You see it all here. This is a 48-yard attempt. Graham to put it down. And Hansen's kick is good. Just inside the right upright to make it a one-possession game again with 9.16 to go. And the 49 is up by eight. To Baltimore we go. It's New England visioning the Ravens football night starts at 7 Eastern time. And that should be the AFC championship game the following one season. Candlestick Park now with 916. Left in regulation after the fourth Hanson field goal. This kickoff is taken at the goal line by Kendall Hunter. Up to the 21 yard line he goes. And last year in that championship game, winner to the Super Bowls, Flacco throwing to Evans in the end zone. Couldn't make the catch. Billy Cundiff is wide left on what would have sent the game into overtime. Bill Belichick, Bob Kraft celebrating the AFC championship. Big game now because both teams lost today. One and one excruciating losses in Baltimore next Sunday night. Yeah, the thing I remember about that game last year was how well Joe Flacco played. Really probably statistically outplayed Tom Brady. And uh, he's going to have to do it again if they're going to knock him off. Losers going to be one and two after next week. Both losing today. Week two, who's going to the outside. And Levy says uh, he ain't going anywhere. Well, DeAndre Levy is... He's a young man that uh, Gunther Cunningham, their defensive coordinator, says is their best linebacker right now. Doesn't get a lot of attention. Former third round draft pick. Watch him come shooting up here. This is about the second or third time we've seen his speed just be a factor in making plays right around the line of scrimmage. They've got some guys that can play linebacker and play defense on this team. They just need to get a touchdown or two out of their offense now. Second down and 11, eight and a half to go. And Smith will throw, and that's caught at the 24-yard line by Vernon Davis. Stephen Tullock back in the game, making the catch. So it'll be third down and seven, and the Niners, if nothing else, would like to begin to take some time off the clock right now. Yeah, but you better not get too conservative. We, we've seen what this Lions offense can do over the years. They haven't done it so far in this one, but... They are certainly capable of scoring enough points to come back and win. They were in this situation last week and came back and won. Under eight minutes to go on third down and seven from the 24-yard line. And a pass to the outside is caught, and Crabtree is out of bounds at the 31-yard line. The Niners We'll have to wait and see where they spot this. It's going to be very close to a first down, and obviously, and it is, as they get the spot they were looking for and move the chains. Great job by Crabtree at the end of this play. Makes a catch, sees it out of bounds. Watch him just push the ball forward a little bit by getting his body turned. It looked like it was just enough to get it over the first down marker. Kill, kill, kill. <laughs> Halfway through the quarter. Four. Uh-uh. And this time it's Levy again. A replay of the first down play on the left series. A lot of big guys in the game. John Levy coming through and making the play once again. You can see that they've got defensive linemen. they got tight ends. they got extra line. And maybe just didn't care. He just shot through the gap and made the play. Now it almost forces the 49ers and Alex Smith to think about throwing the ball here. If you had what wham pass or some play action off of it, might be a decent time. Four yard loss. 14. And it's tipped and 
Trying to throw out the flat to Gore that would result in a much anyway in all likelihood Sammy Hill put the pressure on and it's third down and 14 for the 49ers. It's interesting how many times you watch the Detroit Lions and they just they don't look that great and you think oh boy you know, what's going on and then the fourth quarter comes around the defense comes to life and they need a play right here you can feel a little momentum shift if Hunter Cunningham squad can make a play right now. Have to get to the 42 for a first down. And that's Crabtree. And Crabtree will get to the 43-yard line. He did 14, got 15. Gore helped spring him first down. Ryan Gore was lined up in the backfield. He's going to circle out and watch the block he makes on the tail end of this play. Crabtree makes the catch. And then it's Gore that upends the defender standing there thinking he was about to make that tackle. Good catch by Crabtree, too. We talked about how great his hands are. Two times now he's been able to convert and keep this drive alive. And with a good screen block as well at the end. From the 43. Chewing up the clock. Number six to play. Swing it out to Gore. Gore turns it back upfield with a nifty move and all the way to the Detroit 41-yard line, breaking away from Justin Durant. When you have great athletes, you get them in space and you let them do their thing. And Frank Gore this time is just going to make this catch on the flare out. Nothing else. Durant's got him one-on-one. -on -one. There you go. See if you can tackle him. Not many people can. Hunter back in with Miller at fullback. Give it to Hunter. Can't go anywhere. Stop for no gain. Clock under five minutes now. You know, it was interesting talking to Alex Smith about just having Jim Harbaugh have a former quarterback in the National Football League that every day is working on every detail of taking the snap, of dropping back, how he calls the plays in the huddle, every little detail. But this is the first time in his career he's had the same offense in back-to-back -back seasons, and you can see the growth. You can see the difference it's made. Kill, kill, kill. Second and ten. Nine, eight, eight. Here we go. Forced down. He can run. And he proves it right here. Flag is thrown as well at the 22 yard line. Delaney Walker may have been holding. And Smith slow and getting up with a bloody nose, with the bridge of the nose anyway. Holding number 46 on the offense. 10 yards and a spot of foul remains. Walker holding Spave. Well, he did get his arm out there. Let's see if we think this is a whole. Oh, he grabbed the jersey. Yeah, right in front of the official. I don't think it would have been called, but when you grab the jersey and they see that little tug of the jersey, that's what you're going to get. And too bad, because that was Alex Smith. That's the way he used to play in college. And, boy, he took one right to the chops there, didn't he? Mm -hmm. This is nose bloody. Penalty as well. He was hit there by John Wendling. There's a forearm right to the helmet, too. That easily could have been called. That makes it second and ten as the ball has moved back to the 42 yard line. And then they'll give it to Gore, and he gets pummeled as he reaches the line of scrimmage. That's Durant making the tackle, setting up a very big third and nine. Justin Durant, a little payback for that open field missed tackle on Frank Gore. That time he came downhill hard and Met Frank Gore in the backfield. It's a nice tackle right there. This has just been one of those ugly, gritty kind of defensive games, and Lions again with a chance. Three and a half. Third and nine. Passes caught. Crabtree and another big first down. Lunging for it as he did on the sideline before. So Crabtree coming up huge on this drive with the blood streaming down the nose of Smith. 
That's not exactly Willis Reed, but it looks pretty good out there what Alex Smith is doing. Timeout Lions. It's first and ten, thanks to Michael Crabtree. The 49ers on this drive. Third and seven, third and 14, third and nine. Convert each of them on passes to Crabtree. So the number one draft choice of the 49ers back in 09 at a Texas Tech. The star of this drive with the ball at the 31 yard line, 323. The Lions have already used a timeout. And look at this run, an eight yard run by Hunter before he gets tackled by Ashley Palmer. And really putting Detroit in the box right now. You can see the consternation exhibited by Schwartz. They have to take another timeout. Great run for the office. This will be the farewell season. And the final season has its debut this Thursday night. The office right here on NBC. City Hall in San Francisco. Crabtree, either injured or contract holdouts or whatever through the years. And he's really now emerged. And on this particular drive, I mean, this is this is one for the books here. Yeah, every time they had to have a play on third down, they went right to Crabtree. And here's a guy that was, uh, he had a good season last year, but he's had so many foot injuries. And they're saying now that for the first time, He's healthy, he's able to practice, and it's just making a huge difference. One of the great hands catchers in the game right now. And he has come up big in the clutch so far in this one. So is Alex Smith. Tenth overall pick at second and three, and the Lions are down to their last timeout. Plus the clock stops with a two-minute warning. Gore is the running back. And the pass is caught by Davis. He's inside the 10. He'll cut it back. Touchdown. Vernon Davis with his second touchdown of the night on a 23-yard pass from Smith. And what a drive that was. Clutch, clutch, clutch. Davis now with five catches on the night. Twice into the end zone. A 13 play drive. That took over six minutes. Lions had to use two of their timeouts. They're now down by 15 with 3.04 left in the fourth. Vernon Davis right here, and Justin Durant's going to see the run action away. Go down and try and get it, and then go, uh-oh. Comes out the other side, but I tell you, Alex Smith, that's what championship quarterbacks do. You know, sometimes the hardest thing in the world is when you're trying to run out the clock, and you know that the other team is going to be playing the run, and you're going to have to complete balls on third down and long and he consistently beat the Detroit Lions in the clutch. This is the next step forward in my mind for Alex Smith. Well, he made huge strides last year. Of course, everybody said, well, the defense was great. And he ran the ball great, so he was a game manager. It's almost become a badge of dishonor to be called a game manager. Yeah, but uh, Jim Harbaugh gave him a lot of credit. He said, the first time I sat down and met with Alex Smith, he said, I want to win, and I want to win here. And he said, for all the abuse that this guy has taken in this area from the media and the fans and even his own teammates and coaches over the years, it would have been really easy for him to say, you know what, forget all this. I'm going somewhere else, and I'll show you guys. But he said it's not in his DNA. He wanted to win right here and prove that he could take this team to a championship. And tonight shows you a lot. This needs a good cut man before he comes out for the 12th round. Here's Logan downing it in the end zone. And the Lions will take it at the 20 with 304. Looking at the numbers tonight. Stafford throwing a lot of short stuff. 23 attempts and 133 yards. And then Alex Smith, some short stuff and 
couple of deep balls sacked three times but a masterful drive and Crabtree was just terrific on it as well. Yeah, both uh, first overall picks in the draft in their respective years. But for Matthew Stafford, they could never establish the run well enough to get those two safeties out of the middle of the field to give Calvin Johnson a chance. Lady Niner stayed in this defense all night. Stafford's going to step up and get sacked. If he runs into Smith, Alden Smith is there. After they bookended him, he did a step forward, and Alden Smith, who had 14 sacks as a rookie last year, gets one here. Look at the distance. You know, that's... I'll race you St. Bolt if you give me a 30-yard head start. You will? Yeah. Close. <laughs> you want a 50-yard race? Yeah. <laughs> Second and 17. And that is incomplete. Over the middle, intended for Kevin Smith. Third and a mile upcoming. But this is what this 49ers defense does to you. They, they frustrate you. And their ability to play the run, you know, it all ties together. But their ability to play the run, basically in one-on-one -on -one blocking situations without the extra guy down in the box that you hear about, is the difference. It allows them to play guys deep the entire game and not give up big plays. The Packers got a taste of it last week. And it's caught by Bell. And Joy Bell picks up a first down and a lot more. And Joy Bell will take the ball into San Francisco territory where he's forced out by Brown. So the 49ers and the crowd ready to begin a celebration on a third and 17. And the next thing you know, Bell is free for 47 yards. They're not going to rush very many people at all here. Just three coming up. So now you think with eight people back there, somebody on this great tackling defense is going to be able to make a play. And none of them do. So that's the first big catch and run. The Lions have come up with it now at the 37 yard line. And Stafford will swing it to the outside, and that'll be caught there by Brandon Pettigrew, who's been pretty silent tonight. Tackled by Willis. The clock stops at 214. You know, when you look at this from a big picture standpoint uh, for Jim Schwartz's team, somebody else has to establish themselves as a big threat. You know, there's no way that you can allow everybody to play the kind of defenses that Calvin Johnson is seeing unless you can establish somebody else catching the ball. So I think game plan wise next week and in the future they've got to really make sure that they're getting the ball to other people to give Calvin Johnson a chance. Timeout. San Francisco. It is a 30 second timeout. Timeout. 49ers. We saw him stop the run early on. No problems at all with that. No extra guy down. You can just see these are all one-on-one -on -one blocks that the 49ers and the likes of Justin Smith keep winning, and the Lions and their offensive line keep losing. I, the Green Bay Packers, it was the same way. This is almost like watching the game tape of what I saw from Green Bay last week. They took away the deep throws, dared them to run the football, if you want to try and play catch and run football, go ahead. So second down and five with 214 to play in the fourth. Stafford. Under pressure, slips away, going deep into the end zone, and it's incomplete with flags all over the place. Intended for Titus Young. Offensive pass it, interference. And that was Deshaun Goldson back there with him. Not even close. Mm -hmm. Titus Young gave him a big shove in the back. And, and caught by everybody. Pass interference, number 16 on the offense. Down. Good job by Stafford scrambling around, but now watch Titus Young just give him a little push. Wilson gave him a little push back. Push was on Brown. Shot taken by Stafford. Alden Smith coming in there. 206. It's second down and 15. 
Harbaugh's trying to say it's third down here. To the outside. And that's Young. And Young will come up short of the first down at the two-minute warning. So when we come back, it's going to be a third down and four with 158 left in San Francisco. The 49ers up 27 to 12. Tonight, coming up after the game, another Wendy's post-game report. Michelle will be down on the field. Bob Tony and Mike will break it down, look at other league news, and Chris and I will look ahead to next week in Baltimore. One fifty-eight, third and four, obviously in a four-down situation here for Stafford, and Detroit down by fifteen. Four. The pass is not caught at the 27-yard line. Brandon Pettigrew covered by Patrick Willis. And the Lions will have a fourth down and four. Uh, we talked about how significant it was to have middle linebackers that can play one-on-one -on -one coverage against good receiving tight ends like Brandon Pettigrew. You get to leave them on the field. It's impossible to run against them. Dynamic duo inside for the 49ers. Last Gasp for the Lions. And they keep it alive with Johnson breaking the tackle and then taking the ball down to the nine yard line instead of a first and goal. Got away from Whitner. And the Lions with the first and goal at the nine-yard line, and they will spend their final timeout. <laughs> well, they're like a uh, start of a double play for Matthew Stafford from the shortstop position. First of all, you get Calvin Johnson coming across here. They go, oh, God, that was a deadly pick across the middle. Should have been called as a penalty. Not picked up there. Watch Stafford here. <laughs> Pure side armor out the side door. This is a big open field tackle down the field though by Culliver to force the Lions to come back and snap it again. Don't miss many open field tackles do they? There's Linehan going over things with Stafford so down by 15 first and goal no timeouts. Need two touchdowns at some point a two point conversion in between an onside kick. I would be looking to somebody other than Calvin Johnson on this throw. I know the kind of attention he's going to get. Someone else is going to get one-on-one -on -one coverage. And you have to be able to take advantage. Timeout, San Francisco. It is a 32nd timeout. So I want to look over the defense after seeing what Detroit was showing is their look with Johnson in the slot. What a job Harbaugh has done. I mean, trying to recapture the glory days, the 80s and 90s were the glory days here with Walsh and Bill Seifert. Uh, George Seifert took over for him. And even at the early part of the most recent decade, they were okay. And then they fell off the shelf for about seven years. And Harbaugh comes over and gets them to the NFC Championship game last year. And Going back to the top of the show and a lot of the power poles that you see today where you rank them 1 through 32, the 49ers are either on top or in the top three. Yeah, I mean, you don't go to Green Bay and win on opening day and turn around and apparently beat another playoff team and not be ranked somewhere close to the top. They were voted my number one team this week. The winning Lambeau will do it. Trying to knock off the Lions tonight to go to 2-0 before they go to Minnesota next week. And first and goal, Stafford's going to throw, and it's incomplete as Joy Bell runs into and was covered by Bowman. It'll be second and goal. Now they tried to pick down on Navarro Bowman, and for some reason, Pettigrew just didn't do it. Should have been a walk-in touchdown. They're going to try and get the pick right here. He runs right inside Bowman. And now there's really nowhere to throw the football. Bell falling down. 
Second and goal from the nine. Stafford fires. Incomplete and drop. Scheffler couldn't hold on to it. Try to jam it in there. Look to get it in there. Carlos Rogers covering on the play. Third and goal. You know, another poor throw here. This is a this should be a touchdown. He throws it behind Scheffler. And you can see him after the play. Stafford's gonna put his hands on his helmet like, oh, am I missing these throws? Third down and goal. 135 left. Over the middle, and that is caught by Pettigrew for the touchdown. Well, that was a laser shot. Just one on one right down the middle of the field. That time he finally got Patrick Willis. There we go, over here. Just going to make a little move and just jam that thing in there. And that's your job as a tight end. You got to catch those and get whacked by guys like Dante Whitner and hang on to it. Take the one point attempt here. You saw Schwartz. Because it's all going to amount to. Recovering the onside kick. It's as simple as that. The Lions do not have a timeout. So this will make it an eight point game as Hansen makes the score 27 to 19. And with 89 seconds left, the onside kick will determine the end of the game if San Francisco recovers it or maybe a little drama if Detroit recovers it. Yeah, believe me, the last thing that Jim Harbaugh wants to deal with is. Calvin Johnson running down for a Hail Mary at the end of the game. This is that point in the game where you guys, like, let's end this thing. Get your hands team out there and get it over with. Special teams coach Danny Crossman. Of course, it's all about special teams right now. Brad Seeley, the 49er special teams coach. One of those jobs they used to put me over on the, the hot corner because I was a little taller and they do this <laughs> bouncing balls and believe me, it's not a whole lot of fun. They end up protecting the guy a little bit better now. Usually blockers in front to allow a Vernon Davis or one of their bigger receivers to come down and make the catch. So the 49ers with what they call the hands team for the most part. You saw Vernon Davis out there. Hansen, remember it has to go 10 yards before a lion can recover it. Everybody up at the 45-yard line. And now the 49ers are going to take another timeout. Interesting, there is nobody back in the middle of the field. You could take this kick and kick it down to about the 20 and just try and outrun them. Who knows, you know, those crazy bounces are all around. Absolutely. Thinking the same thing. Somebody should be back there. I don't see. They've got everybody out there. Nobody in the middle of the field. If they did that again, I might take my chances with a little crazy hopping ball down there and see if somebody will miss the first swat at it and if you can get it. Deepest guy was Kyle Williams, who was at his own 45 yard line. So he was 20 yards away, and they come out in the same formation this time. Everybody up right now within 16 yards. Again, nobody deep. I think you got the right idea. I would do that too. Trying to kick it about 25 or 30 yards and take your chances. There it is. That's what he's going to do too. Got a chance. Got a chance. Oh, he and got Williams it. goes back there oh, at the 24-yard line. How appropriate oh, is baby. that? Well, yeah. For Kyle Williams after the two fumbles that cost him a trip to the Super Bowl last year, that was no easy recovery either. Uh -uh. Kyle Williams had to make a sliding recovery. And if this thing bounces around one time, the Lions are going to get it. There's only one guy really with a shot at this one. He gets it, but you could see the Lions were right there. Good recovery. 49ers just almost daring them to do that. And of course now everybody awaiting 
who's going to go to the Purell before the handshake. <laughs> a lot easier to do if you're the winning coach in this situation, which now Jim Harbaugh will be for the second yep. straight year. Well, you know what's going to happen in about 20 years, that handshake last year in Detroit is going to be part of a beer commercial. <laughs> Do you ever think Dennis Green or Jim Mora in those meltdowns ever thought that they'd make hundreds of thousands of dollars from a beer commercial? Yeah, Denny Green told me he planned it all the way. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I have this vision. You can crown him. Yeah, crown him. <laughs> And the 49ers will need one more kneel down, and that's going to do it. And they will go to 2-0. and oh. The Lions will go to 1-1. One and one. The Lions take on Tennessee. Old home week for Jim Schwartz in Nashville in week three. And the 49ers are going to go on the road for the next two at Minnesota and then at the Jets before they play three straight home games against Buffalo, the Giants, and Seattle in October. And there's Schwartz and Harbaugh, and we saw them shake hands before the game. We'll handshake after the game. And no reports. They look tough to me, Al. They look real 49ers tough. 49ers yep. look tough to me. Look like an old Ravens kind of a team or a Steelers team. Wendy's post game report coming up next after the 49ers knock off the Lions 27 to 19.